What's up guys, my name is Andy. In this video, I'm gonna be replacing the stock five gauge instrument cluster on my 66 Mustang with a new six gauge setup from Autometer. If you guys recall on my, on my car, I've got that aftermarket tack that's mounted on the steering column off to the side. It's kind of hard to see. I wanna put it up in front with the rest of my gauges. Plus I also wanna have numbered marks on my gauges instead of like the word temp for the, the water temperature. I wanna know what temperature I'm at instead of guessing what the letter means. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace all those with new gauges. So let's head over to the bench and take a look at what we're gonna install. So the first thing we're gonna need is a gauge cluster that will hold it. This is from Scott Drake and there's the part number for those that need that. And this is just a standard, you know, six, six gauge bezel, nothing fancy. Just went with the black trim on it. I didn't want the wood grain or the aluminum, whatever. Just real simple set up to take the six gauges just like we want. And then I believe you just plug in the bulbs that you would, that you have in your stock setup. They just, I think they just plug right in here in this plastic setup. So this will be pretty simple, pretty easy to use. Let's put, let's see what gauges we've got. So for the speedometer, I'm going to use the 3992. These are all the sport comp gauges, so they all match. This only goes to 120. Let's be realistic, guys. I'm never going to see that speed. Um, maybe the 140 gauge might be something that you guys are interested in, but I'm just not realistically going to get that high in this car. I just don't want to go that fast. So this is sufficient for what I need. And then we've got the 3991 for the tachometer. Again, 8,000 RPM tach. Uh, you know... <laughs> I'm never gonna get to 7,000 even, so getting a 10,000 RPM tack doesn't do us any good. So this is gonna fit perfect where I want. Then just a plain old voltmeter, 3391. These are all, so these are three and three eighths, these are two and a sixteenth, and these will fit the, the instrument cluster that I have. Then we got the fuel gauge is a 3319, and this is 10 ohms uh, full, 30 or 78 ohms empty. Um, there we go, 73 ohms empty, 10 ohms full. That's for the Ford cars. For different cars, there's different readings, but for our, for these Mustangs, I think everything pre-87, I think, is, is the 73 ohms empty, 10 ohms full. And we got the water temperature, 3337, and then we've got, this thing comes with the water temperature setting unit, uh, in case you guys don't want to use the one that's in your car. I don't know if we can, but I'm just going to head and use the one that Autometer supplies because I know it'll work with this gauge. And the last one here is the 3327 is the oil pressure gauge. Also, this has an oil sending unit. Again, I don't know if we can use the ones that are stock on our car, but I'll take the one that goes with this gauge. So these six gauges are what we're going to use along with this bezel. So let's go ahead and get everything taken out of the car uh, before we start putting this together. I do want to point out the nice thing about the car setup is I don't believe we're gonna need any wires that aren't already in the dash. You know, all of the, the wires that feed the existing gauges, you know, your water temperature sending wire, your the tack wire, fuel level, all that stuff should already exist uh, with the gauges that you have. So we're just gonna tap into that stuff and reuse those wires already there. You could run new wires if you want, nothing wrong with that, but I'm just gonna use what the car has and keep it simple. So let's get the, uh, the other stuff out of the car and get, the, get it ready to go. So I went ahead and taped up the steering column here because when you pull this out i don't want it scratching the paint this is new to me you know if before i put this in i had the original column in here i didn't care if it got scratched because it was already scratched it pretty good but i wanted to protect it this time so what we're going to do now we're just going to take out the the six fasteners that hold in this this uh, instrument cluster And as you pull this out, you're gonna notice that it's gonna get kind of hard to pull because you need to disconnect the speedometer cable from the back here. And in my car, I'm gonna to have to lower the steering column down just a little bit by taking these nuts out to hold this up here because I can't get this past the steering column. And what I want to get to is all of the plugs back here and I want to start labeling them as I unplug them off of the cluster so that I know what is what so when we go through and install the new stuff I know what wires need to go where. 
And I'm just going to write on there on a piece of masking tape, you know, what it is. For example, this, uh, this light right here, this is just a light for the dash. So I'm just going to write light on the, on the masking tape and wrap it around this wire. And now that I know that it's just a light. And for this one, I just wrote right turn because this is the right turn signal. There, now that's labeled and I'll just keep going around the dash. One of the things I'm using to help identify what the wires are, are these kind of diagrams. And there's different styles, these are colored. This is another style. Um, and I think I have, yeah, this one that's not colored, but it tells you the color of the wire and stuff like that. So you can, you can find these online. And what's nice is that it's got the color code of the wire. So as I'm pulling these off, you know, for example, this, the ammeter wires right here, I got a red and a yellow wire. You know, where do they go to? And I can trace them back and find out where they go and I can label them accordingly. Now in my new setup, I won't be using the ammeter, but just for example, it's nice to know what wire goes to where and if I need to, to keep those or not. All right, that's the last wire. So now this comes out of the way. I'm not gonna get rid of this. I'm gonna hold on to it. You never know what you're gonna need to do. But now that we've got all of these wires back here, we need to start to organize and figure out what needs to stay, what needs to go. For example, there was four light circuits, you know, to, to light up the dash. And I only need one wire to feed the new gauge cluster. So I need to organize that. Um, you know, the, I was saying earlier about the ammeter. I can get rid of those wires because I'm not going to, I don't, I don't use an ammeter. And the voltmeter that I have in my new gauge cluster can just feed off of the switched power source that is going to feed the rest of the gauges. So that'll be fine. So just take a few minutes in your car and go through and just kind of organize the wires. You know, everything's labeled, so that's going to make it easy. And just kind of start to see what can stay and what can go. And I'm not going to, you know, like, for example, again, the, the ammeter wires, I'm just going to tape them up and tuck them back. Uh, I don't need them. I don't, I don't want to get rid of them, though. You never know what's going to happen. So I'll just kind of tuck that stuff back there. But I will go through and clean up everything else. I'm also going to have to find a solution for the turn signal and high beam lights. For example, so the power is coming in here that's going to blink the light. But this is the ground, and it was grounding to the chassis of that instrument cluster. And the new one is plastic. So I, well, I was thinking that these will just plug right in. They will but I don't have a ground. So I'm gonna have to, to come up with a solution for a ground wire or get different sockets uh, for this setup. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that yet, but that's something that I'm gonna have to address. All right, so I kind of identified what wires I don't need. I'm gonna tape up and stick off to the side and the ones that I do need for each side. And I, I even went down and took out, you know, the tack. I gotta take this out because I need the, the wires from it to feed up in here. So I think this is a good spot to stop. I wanna go over and start looking at the gauge cluster that we're gonna be putting in here that kind of dictates what we're gonna do with the wiring in here. So let's go to the bench and take a look at what we have. So I went ahead and put the gauges in uh, just to get them set up in the cluster. So I kind of get an idea of how it's all gonna look. And you know, I even made sure like, you know, I've got the fuel and the oil and the same as the, the, the stock car, you know, the stop setup, but I moved the, the water temperature from here over to this side compared to, you know, like on our stock setup. And then of course the ammeter that's here, I'm now using a voltmeter. So um, I, I don't really care about that one as much as I do care about these two. These two are more important. So I kind of put them more towards the center. So this is what it's going to look like. And what I wanted to do, I put everything on this drawing here. Now this is not the best drawing. Uh, you can kind of see what we've got. So because this gauge, you know, when you have it this way and you flip it like that, the layout of these gauges are, they match, you know, fuel, oil, volt, water, you know, so that's what I wanted to do with this drawing. And then I'm going to use some connectors to make it so that I only have two wire harnesses that I'm going to have to unplug and then the speedometer cable when if I ever needed to pull this out and service anything or do anything, I don't have to unplug all of the various things like you do on the stock setup. I'm gonna wire it up so that there's just two plugs. And what I've got here are, these are just Molex style of plugs. And I've got, if you've got, if you look at it, it's kind of hard to tell, but there's, there's a slightly different shape in this one versus that one. So if this one went just like that, and then what I'm gonna do is the other plug, it's also a six pin, but I'm gonna reverse it so that what I don't want is two of the same plugs and then I don't know which one goes where. So basically what I've got is this plugs into there, you know, like it's, you know, that's what it would be. But if I put this one there and this one over here, 
and then the ones in the car are the opposite of it, then I won't be able, I won't accidentally plug the, the wrong plug into the wrong setup. It, it can only go one way. So that's kind of what I've got going on here. And the way I kind of drew this on here, it's, you know, it's, <laughs> it's weak sauce, I know, but that's what I've got. And then I tried to kind of sort of color code it uh, with the red being the, the switched voltage. With, you know, in my old auto, you know, audio days in the car, your red wire was your switched wire, your black wire was your ground wire, your yellow wire, wire was your constant, and so on. Um, so I was thinking, okay, I'll just stick with the red wire here, and this is gonna be all of the switched power for these, these gauges. And because the way I'm doing this, we wanna run everything in parallel, so if I just connect all of the 12 plus terminals on all the gauges to one spot, it's, it's all, it's not, you know, we don't wanna run it in series, we're gonna run it in parallel. So this is how I'm gonna to wanna to set that up. And then same thing with the, the lighting that goes in these, these holes here. These are where the lights are. And that's gonna be like one of these and this just goes in here. So this one will be the ground and this will be the, the hot side. And I'll do the same thing on these gauges. I'll just run the, 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 the positive wire for the dash lights. In this case, this red wire would be the dash lights. Um, and so then when the lights on the car are on, these will light up. And then we've got blinkers, you know, that's these purple wires here, then your, your high beam. And I did find out that I'm not gonna be able to use the stock plugs that we have for those lights. I went ahead and got these generic type of receptacle and it just, it just fit inside there. And these take uh, 194 or 168 bulbs. So pretty simple and I can wire it up so that it works the way we want it to. So this is what it's gonna look like. Um, if this may look like a big spaghetti mess here, that's fine. When I get it all done, it's gonna be all cleaned up and zip tied and, and nice and nice and tight so that it'll just have just this with two plugs and the speedometer cable and we're set. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all that wired up and then I can, once I get this done, I can go into the car and get the wire, you know, the opposite plugs set up for the wires that are in the car. So that wraps up all of the wiring that we needed to do. Uh, I did want to point out, do you notice how none of these wires are pulled tight? They're a little loose. So if I ever had to service something, take it apart, I'm not pulling against other wires. So this one, some of these might be a little tighter than I want, but this should work. Also, uh, you don't need really heavy gauge wire for any of this stuff. This, I just use what I had in my, in my shop here. Um, but the downside with using heavier gauge is it's harder to bend. And so this stuff kind of gets kind of stiff. And when you're plugging this into the dash, you know, it's gonna be kind of harder to move around. So hopefully we'll be okay, hopefully it won't be an issue, but just, just point out that, that you don't need a real big wire for this stuff. Also, uh, because I'm not, you know, I'm not able to transfer the mileage over to the new speedometer here, I just made a little, you know, those little sticker things that you can, you can get those little machines at the store. And I just put what the mileage was on the other odometer. Um, it's not gonna, on these old cars, it doesn't matter, um, you know, it's, less of an issue with these old cars, but I just wanted to have that just in case uh, anybody needed that. It's kind of out of the way, but at least it's on there and uh, we can do that. So now this thing is ready to go. Uh, I think what we can do is go into the car and get the wiring set up on that and get ready to get this installed. So I went ahead and got this one already done on this end. I didn't want to go through another time lapse of that setup, but here I got the wiring set up and then the wires that I didn't need to cut, I just kind of taped them off and tucked them into the corner. I didn't want to cut all the wires out that I don't need to cut out, but I definitely don't want them in my way. So 
All right, so then also remember, see, you notice how these plugs are the two different styles. That way, when I go to plug this in, I don't plug the wrong one in the wrong spot and risk damaging anything. So that should make it hopefully idiot proof. And then of course, we've got the speedometer cable, which is gonna be a little bit of a chore uh, threading that in because you got to reach in from the back and stuff. It's just not quite long enough to, to do from the front. So other than that, it's time to plug in the cluster and, and then uh, turn it on. All right, now, again, trying to get those plugs plugged in before we get this done. All right, that's gonna look awesome. Now we just need to get the speedometer cable in there. Okay, all right, that was a lot of work to get that threaded in the back, and I probably might have shot myself in the foot. You know, I probably should turn the key on and make sure everything works before we start, uh, you know, finishing, you know, final install here. So what I'm gonna do is I gotta go into the engine bay and I gotta replace that temperature sending unit and the oil sending unit just so that it matches the stuff the autometer sent. I don't know if the stock stuff would work with these, if it would read accurately, but I do know that the stuff that came with the gauges will work. So I'm gonna get those swapped out and then we can come in here and uh, turn the key and see if everything works. All right, guys, let's turn it on and see what happens. So, all right, cool. It's just in the on position. We got the voltage, that's working. Yeah, that's good. This is all good to go. The fuel gauge is, yeah, it's reading. Good, got some gas. All right, uh, let's try it on here. Oh, I guess I gotta give it a little more gas. Good. It's gonna take a minute for that to to warm up, but the oil pressure's reading. Everything's reading. Uh, I think I can go ahead and finish screwing this into the dash, and then take the tape off of here. All right, guys, that's it. That is a gauge set installed. Everything works. You know, I, as I was finished screwing in that uh, gauge cluster into the dash, I went ahead and just let the motor run, and I got that temperature. The, the, the water gauge is working great because about 185 or so is when my fan kicked on and started to dry. I mean, it was perfect, exactly what I wanted. So uh, I, think, <laughs> I think this is a win. So guys, I did want to point out that the, the, the speedometer, you know, the miles aren't going to match. So you're, that's something you're going to have to be mindful of on these cars. I don't know if it's as much of a deal anymore. Um, but recording that, what you had on the previous odometer, I think that's a good start. Um, and then uh, other than that, it's just time to take the car out and go for a drive. Um, I'm excited. I'm really excited to just get, you know, some numbers to go with my reading so I know where things are at instead of guessing what the letters are or the tick marks mean. Um, so um, on the oil pressure, guys, uh, what, what do you guys run on your gauge? Uh, is it 50 pounds? What, you know, for a relatively stock 289, let me know what you guys what your oil pressure's at, and I'll make sure that mine's where it needs to be. I know my motor's tired, 
you know, the, it may be on its way out anyway, so if my oil pressure is reading a little low, that might be some indicators that it's time to do something with my motor here, but uh, at least I'll know what my temperature or my pressure reading is supposed to be. So that's it. Guys, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. And if you subscribe, I appreciate it because it helps my channel out. And we'll see you in the next one.